identical twins, Will and Anthony Nunziata. Thanks so much for being on. Thank you so oh, much you so for, much having, having, us, for having, having us. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna hear you. S you answer at the same time too. I know it I, happens sometimes. Sorry. Oh, okay, well that's all right. Um, we're gonna hear you sing in just a moment, but first we have to get some background on you guys. All right, where'd you grow up, and when did you start singing? Well. To answer the latter question, our mother says we've been singing since the womb. I think it's just like a joke she likes to tell. <laughs> but Anthony, what do you She would know. She would know. I th uh, but our father, our father was the one who taught us singing on these like epic car rides down to New York City. So we grew up in Westchester County, well, New we York. We were born in Brooklyn. You can't forget Brooklyn. We were no, born. We, we wouldn't. Born in Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> we were born in Brooklyn, but we only lived there for six months. And yes, then our p we moved up. To Pelham Matter. To Pelham Matter. Matter. County. And then I was on these in these like epic car rides to New car York City. Car rides to where? Just, to just, to just, see Broadway shows. To so New York City really, from Westchester. And they would they, they know, would teach us two part harmony in the car rides. Your mom and dad. Our mom and dad, but really my dad. Right. The singer. My mom was driving. Yes. Well, always. Still does. Yes. Okay. So yeah. your dad was classically trained singer. No, like he did theater growing up. He did a lot of theater. Yeah, but he but he uh, sang in the choir, like in those glee clubs in oh, Brooklyn, sure. where he grew up in high school and in college. Mm -hmm. He played the trumpet, so he was always musical. He he's in advertising, so he's like this creative mind. He would make up these crazy, silly songs, jingles, and put it on us to like test it out. Test it out, like and we'd, we'd go to IHOP and we'd be singing an IHOP song. We'd right. be going to Broadway shows, and he'd be teaching us the two-part harmony to like so, when the saints go marching in. So like that creative energy was always around us and, and it was encouraged the encouragement to sing and just yeah so when did you first get on the stage when did your folks say i think they're good enough for people to hear you were singing first well i mean nursery yeah. school there's I this came photo i'm just singing oh yeah i, I was you're identical but who's, who's older well I anthony's am. older by like a minute but okay. people sometimes think i am no well you just don't stop talking i have a lot you to say you don't stop talking i have a lot to say uh, yes you have to yield to anthony sometimes Sometimes is the opposite. Thank you, Ann. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So, oh, wait, stage. Stage, first time. Nursery school, I can remember. It was a very, very formal Christmas gathering yeah. with the one and only Santa. But I saw Santa on the stage, and in my mind, at three, four years old, whatever I was, Santa's on stage. Why can't I join him and sing a solo? So there I went up on the stage and sang a cappella something i forget what it was and then but anthony you were like it was like a little bit later for you like well, in terms of singing on the well, stage you were you always kept in the same classroom because I, I i'm the mother of fraternal twins that's right. right and they were in different classrooms but right next door to each other so how did you go to school so our mom made it a point to have us in separate classrooms throughout our entire uh, schooling career schooling, just so that people, both our parents yes yeah. they thought it was they were very cognizant of us having they didn't our dress own you like no, no. We they didn't, didn't do, do that. anything. Okay. When did somebody pay to hear you guys on stage? What year was it? Our first oh, professional. Someone paid. paid. Well, our first professional job was the jingle. That's right. We were uh, 14 years old, and we were cast as the Jingle Voices. And you might have seen this commercial. It still plays actually during the, the holiday Nut season. Cheerios commercial that happens during the Christmas time, where the Honey, Honey Nut Bee goes into Scrooge, and Scrooge is like Bah humbug, and the voices in the background. It's you guys. Nobody can say. I don't want it to say because I don't can know. Can you about do? The, can you do a little bit of it? Really high. Go low. Run through puberty. Good. Okay, let's go. Nobody can say no to Honey Nut Cheerios. Something like that. Something it paid like for that. college. It paid for college. <laughs> college. Not paid for college, yeah, Anne. paid for college. Well, that little bit. Wait, and you yeah. went to Boston College. Yes. And did you major in singing? I majored in journalism, actually, oh, in broadcasting. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, yeah. And, but, but, but continuing to sing and to study acting and directing, mm -hmm. A passion of mine, and of course, being a liberal arts university, I'm a bit of a, a, a nerd. So I love taking all those other classes to for that well-rounded Jesuit education. Nicely done. Thank you. Nicely done. All right. So um, you are about to make your debut at Carnegie Hall. Wow. And you've been playing all over the country. What does this mean to you? Well, it means a lot. I think being born and bred in New York, it's one thing, but for both of us as a team, as a singing team. It was always Carnegie Hall, and it's if you don't mind saying a quick story, I mean, oh, sure. our, our grandmother, yeah. our, our dad's mom, and our great aunt, her sister, when um, they were in their 40s, they gather up as much money as they could to see Frank Sinatra in the last row of balcony at Carnegie Hall. And it was near our grandma's passing, our Italian grandmother, and she looked at both of us and said, whether or not I'm there in person or not, 
I will have the best seat in the house at your debut. And that must have been like, I mean, I get chills thinking about it. That was about 16 years ago. And, you know, I'm grateful that it's happening now, too, because our parents and our younger sister, Annie, the normal one in the family, our parents. Who lives in Connecticut. Who lives in Connecticut, in trouble where your daughter. In trouble, yes. Our parents and our whole is, and our entire family have our, been just like so supportive the entire every step of the way and supportive mm -hmm. not just because they're our family but supportive because they know for each of us individually this is part of our gift this is part of our calling in life and to see something be recognized in that in, in the way of being able being called to play Carnegie Hall first and foremost for me. It's very humbling. Yes. And I take Ditto. it I take it I take it very much now it's Are not, you scared? I'm nervous because I want to do good. You're do gonna you know, do okay. Do, to watch you two on stage, I am reminded <laughs> of the old time crooners of Sinatra oh. and the way you play off of each other. You're going to be 33 years old on November the 23rd. Stop it. Like <laughs> Don't even go there with oh me. Oh, my gosh. Um, but you're, you're kind of throwbacks. Are you told that? Yeah. I mean, I, we were definitely born in the wrong era. I know Anthony and I, since we were in our well, early 20s. Well, thank you, Thank you, Ann, because that's a, that's, that's, a, a that's, a, that, that's an affirmation of, you know, kind of like I think we were both, I mean, we've studied the Smothers Brothers, Martin and Lewis, you know, even like a Lucy Ethel. But, you know, for us, it's always done kind of been like a natural thing where like you know I sometimes overstay my welcome but Anthony's kind of like the calm force that if I'm ever on stage and I'm not getting a laugh or an, I'm interview, at, or an interview or an interview yes. like this yes. <laughs> I have Anthony as this kind of like force behind me he's kind of like this just very calming like ha ha um. you guys were born to be showmen really um I well I feel I feel comfortable in front of people and you know what I mean um so I guess so again I just look back I think back to my dad my dad is a well person, but like when we were kids, he was like nuts with us. He's still nuts, though. Yes, he is, but in a well way. And this anyway, so no, it's not. So, it, but it, but it's all. Yes, let's that. talk yeah. about let's, let's talk about who your Sorry. grandfather is on your mom's side. Oh, oh sure. So our, I got this will. Okay, don't touch me. Yeah, good. Okay. Yield to Anthony. Thank you. Yes. Man. Yeah. Um, uh, our grandfather, his name was Bill Wendell, and. Um, uh, for, for those who may recognize him as the voice of such shows as To Tell the Truth, Truth or Consequence, but his like, sort of big claim to fame was being David Letterman's announcer for about 15 years. And growing up with him in our life, because he was Pa to me and to, and to Will, but whenever we would have those elementary school or middle school musicals, he was the one who would come over, and I remember he would just huddle with us. Boys, and he'd say, booming voice. Yeah, that's, that's, that was close. Boys! That was enough, that's enough. And so he would say something like that, oh, boys, you did very well, I'm so proud of you. He was all about, my grandfather, always about stage presence. Yes, when he came into a room. Yes. Well, it, what a voice. Yes, yes. Yeah, booming. yes. And he like 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, very booming. And, but also he was... A he gentle was, giant. Yes, oh, that was nice. That, did you make that up? We can continue. Oh. Yes. Um, so yes, uh, yeah, he was just a, a kind soul. So he, t he I remember... I remember him saying to us, even that young of age, as if we were like little professionals already, he would say, be kind. Yeah. Be kind to everybody you meet. And if those are words that, again, as we're talking right now, just sort of reverberate back to back Well, to when me. he passed, yeah. Letterman was very sad. So many people were so sad. And you miss, you miss that voice. You just miss that voice. So before we go any further, let's show the folks what you do on stage. Okay. Okay.
Okay, I don't mind telling you, chill bumps. Oh. <laughs> chill bumps when I, when I see you guys. And I, I watched you watching yourselves, and you're kind of going through the, I mean, what do you, are you hard on yourselves? Do you, do you say, yeah, I nailed it, no, I didn't nail it? Wait, Anthony, I have a, I've never asked you this. Do you look at me watching that, or do you look at yourself? Because I know you well enough to know. I know You're which looking, one I am. But no, but I mean, are you judging me? <laughs> are you looking to see if I'm off? I love you, but tell the truth no, in front of the audience. Well, I already know that, but, you know, that's, we don't have to say that now. You did well. Don't I thought those, you did great. Thank you. Let's answer Ann's question. That um, uh, I breathe with it. I'm con like, when I look at that, yeah. I, I, I'm, I remember that moment so vividly. And in the moment, I remember just with that orchestra too, feeling just so in the moment. But yes, afterwards, of course, like I'm critical because for the next performance, I wanna say, oh, I, I don't have to take a breath there or oh, take a little bit of a deeper breath there. Because Tony Bennett always said this, you're a student of your craft always. And so that's always spinning in my head. Who do you two want to sing with? Do you want to sing with Tony Bennett? Do you want to, who, who, Lady Gaga? I mean, who do you want to be on stage with someday? Tony Bennett. I mean, yeah? I would, would love to. You have to hurry, though, because, I mean, he's still in good voice. I but, know. You know. Oh, I would love it. I think he'd be a he's great my idol. He's my idol. How yeah. about Frank Sinatra? Absolutely. Yes. With a video, he was yes. A with, he was, in another life, I was hanging with Frank. Are you no, Sammy Davis, Judy Garland. Are, are you serious? Or? Oh, Anthony, I, is this a moment? Like, are you no, okay? I don't, are Anthony, you okay? I, I'm very well. Oh, but he's Anth from the past. Anthony, I'm from the past, and you're welcome. I'm here. So, who do you, as you, I mean, we've established you're going to be 33 years old. Yes. Um, as you, as you go on in life, what's going to happen in 10 years? What, what's the end game? Are you always going to sing together, stay together? You know what, Ann? I, you know, look at. As individuals, Anthony's an amazing songwriter. I love to direct as a stage director, concert director. But frankly, together, Anthony and I have always wanted, and literally, like, being in this studio gives me chills, and I think Anthony, too, I can do the little ESP. We've always wanted, like, our own talk show. In the sense of, we, we both, something that we both share, we love meeting people. When we get to travel this country and we get to hear, you know... People's stories. People's and, stories. And, and what, how, you know how songs or stories connect with them in some way yes. from just seeing us on stage. I you would know, love... The married couple I, looks at us yeah. and they're like, you remind me of us, or, you know, and I don't know I would love to, like, was, one but... day continue that conversation in some way, whatever it is. Yeah. But in terms of working together, I... it's natural at this point. You know what I mean? It's not like a forced thing where I'm going to a job because someone put us together. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. I mean, Look, I don't know what... I, it's something. Well, I mean, I we, we've been very fortunate. We've worked very hard to stick with it. I mean, obviously, it's a very tough business, but I know that for Anthony and I, and a lot of the music that we're attracted to and looking at us from out here, I knew in my gut that it would be until we were a little bit older that I feel like we would hit in terms of getting more and more bookings because I think the music that we're attracted to in our age and demeanor on stage, we needed a little bit more life in our belt. And, you know, when I kind of look at our trajectory, I mean, the whole TV thing has always been fascinating to me because, I mean, I, I mean, I, in a selfish way, but I think more so altruistically, maybe, and you can relate, I mean, the fact is that to reach as many people as possible and try to inspire and entertain as many as well, possible. Well, you're, you're teaching singing to others. Tell me about that piece that, that you're doing as well. Well, yeah, I mean, one of our favorite accomplishments was 10 years ago, we created our arts own, and education Arts Matter Educational Outreach. Yeah. So wherever we travel, and we'll get to do it in Connecticut, um, we get to meet with, with, with students who are passionate about the arts. And we just let them know that, look, whatever it is that you're passionate about in life, right now maybe it's music or whatever academically you're passionate about, go for it. You may not know exactly how you're going to get where you're supposed to go, but if every step of the way you stay focused on what's, what's, what's giving you that fire in your belly, Follow that, and then mm. everything will take care of itself. It really will. Well, I can't wait to follow you two on your journey to who knows where, right? To a talk show host, uh, uh, to a talk show. And good luck at Carnegie Hall. That is just amazing. And we'll be watching Will and Anthony Nunziata. Thank you. And thank you, thank you so much for having us. Send who 
Who's this girl I spent all night kissing And if Walter's right here, then who else is missing? Got a little sidetracked to find my solution Find the keys to the door, but it's also a metaphor 